Hey Lawn Care Nation, so it's almost that time of year. It's uh, mid-March. So as you can see here behind me uh, on the, the ground, I've got uh, the Xmark Commercial 30, the 2020 model. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys uh, how I do uh, an oil change on these. I've heard people say that it's a bit difficult changing the filter and that you got to remove a whole bunch of stuff off of it. I'm going to show you uh, an easy way to do it uh, without having to remove uh, anything uh, out of the way uh, to be able to remove that uh, oil filter. Uh, also, this mower uh, has been sitting all winter. I actually didn't even get a chance at the end of the season to properly put it away, so I have no stabilizer in the fuel or anything. Uh, so the first step here uh, to an oil change is to warm up uh, the existing oil. So so we're going to see if we can get this uh, guy started. Start with putting the choke on. The fuel still on. Actually, I didn't even turn the fuel off. So we'll see how this goes. It's got half a tank in there. Okay, so the next step is to drain the oil out. Uh, this part uh, I just do through uh, the uh, dipstick holes. I take the dipstick out, uh, tilt the mower on its side, uh, and drain the oil uh, out that way. On the Commercial 30, it's a little bit uh, sketchy because of the fact that the deck sticks out past the tires. So on a traditional 21 inch mower, uh, that's very easy to do uh, because the deck uh, is in line with the wheel so you can just uh, tilt it on an angle and drain it out with this one uh, sometimes it takes uh, a little finagling or putting some wood and stuff under the wheels there uh, to uh, give it some space so that when you're uh, tilting it up there uh, it clears the deck Oil is actually pretty clean still, not too bad. Let's start from this side, it's easier to prop it up, and then I'll move to that side there. And this is the trickiest part, just balancing it. <clears throat> Okay, so for me, the key to removing this uh, oil filter without having to remove any of the bars or anything is just to use a, a rubber strap uh, type wrench here. Uh, so this is a wrench, pretty inexpensive at any tool store. You can wrap it around objects like that. You just uh, feed this through the handle, tighten it up, and then this lets you uh, loosen that uh, in those tight confined spaces. Works good for even uh, in the kitchen uh, for jar lids and stuff that you can't get open. Uh, so one thing I would suggest is just uh, there's a little tab here where the fuel line is. You can just move that out of the way just to give yourself a little bit more clearance there. And uh, removing the filter is uh, counterclockwise. So we're gonna have to turn it this way. So positioning uh, the strap wrench, there's this little uh, section here with some grippy teeth. So it's going to go down that way so that when we're putting pressure on it, it's turning it counterclockwise. Sometimes you got to work it from different angles, depending on your clearance.
And there we go. So it's just finding the right angle to attack it in so that you have enough room to pull the wrench down to get that initial grip. Yeah, there we go. So now I can actually move this back. At it. So it'll give me a little bit more room, I think. And there we go. Three. So the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make a custom little oil pan using a old antifreeze bottle. I'm gonna cut a section of it out just so I can slide it underneath this bar, just underneath the front part uh, of the filter there so that uh, any oil will drain into this. And Okay, so essentially, uh, this is what I did. This is all you need for an oil pan uh, for this to work uh, uh, pretty easily is uh, just the bottom of a container like that. Cut one end thin, just leaving uh, the lip around there. And then the other side, you can keep a little bit taller. And what you're going to do is you're just going to slide this underneath that bar uh, kind of up on an angle just so that it's under the filter. The filter's on an angle, so the oil is going to be coming out of this uh, front corner. And that way it just pours down here and uh, stays inside the container there. We got this hand loose. Biggest thing here is just getting my hand back out of here. So bring you guys in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing there. So you can see the makeshift oil pan just underneath there, catching all the oil and how uh, being on an angle there kind of uh, works perfectly for that. So the next step, of course, is to get our brand new oil filter and take the plastic off of it. And I'm using uh, an Oregon brand filter, the 83-282. I like the Oregon's, obviously, because this is a trusted name brand, but also uh, I like that it's just a black filter, uh, so it matches uh, the factory uh, Xmark filters as well if you uh, can't get the Xmarks, uh, you know, where you are. So, of course, we're going to take a little bit uh, using my clean finger at the bottom of the uh, oil container where it connects here, get some of the oil that's in there. just like that you see it's just a thin little coat on there and then I'll fish this back in its place you want to just try to get it started without cross threading it it should be pretty easy you feel there's no resistance on it so you know it's not being cross thread as you're turning it once I get it kind of snug, then I can pull out my drain pan. I know there's no more oil coming out of it. It should only be hand tightened, your filter. But because it's kind of in a tight area, I'm gonna use that strap wrench again and just lightly tighten it. But now we're going in the opposite direction. down cinch it up just to get the rest of the way in there because of a sort of the tight confined space and that should be good and uh, that's how uh, I do uh, the filter replacement without needing to uh, remove any of this so the next step is to get a funnel and uh, top the oil back off okay so next because my driveway is a bit sloped 
I've got the back wheels uh, blocked off there. You want the mower to be level when you're filling it with oil, so you get a correct uh, oil level. Uh, I've just got a piece of uh, landscape tie here underneath the front of the deck and another piece of wood. And the farther I push this piece of wood back behind, it will lift up the mower higher. And I'm just using a bubble level there uh, to uh, get the mower to uh, a level height. So just lifting up on that wood when I get it, the bubble to the center, then I just slide the wood to that height and leave it. Double check, I can bring it up a bit more. And perfect, you can see what I've done there. Basically lift up the mower and get that bubble level centered. Now, of course, you only need to do this if uh, you've got a driveway that's sloped as well. If you've got a perfectly level spot that you can uh, fill the oil, then uh, you don't need to do that part. So next, I'm going to be using some Pennzoil 10W30 oil, just some conventional oil in it, and uh, my oil fill uh, funnel that I have here. And then I actually like to take my uh, paper towel and push it right through the bottom just to make sure that it's all clear. Like that. Put that in spot. And then I do the same with the actual oil container. Just clear some of the debris away from where it pours. So I like to just pour the oil in. Let it sit. I don't pre-measure how much oil is going in. I just uh, check it with the dipstick as I go. Give it a few seconds. Make sure you clean your dipstick good so that you can get a good reading and the motor's still level. So then I'm gonna pull the funnel. And the correct level here, it says, uh, so you put the dipstick in, but you don't tighten the threads. So you just have it sitting like that. Then I'll pull it out. See if we can see anything. It's starting to show a bit. It's always hard to tell with fresh oil because it's so clean. And try it again. So it looks like it's just into the uh, middle there. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Especially since the uh, oil filter needs to fill up as well. So you can see there, it's perfectly right at the top of the full mark. So we are going to now run the motor for a bit, let it circulate, and then we'll check it again. Still level. No, it slipped. <clears throat> All right, I can't and see where we're at. <clears throat> yeah, we're at the full. Very hard to tell. I don't know if you guys will see it on camera. And of course, it's best uh, to also check the oil again once you've uh, mowed with it a couple times uh, to uh, you know constantly keep an eye on it. The level off. And on the other side, I'm looking here at the new oil filter, and you can see underneath no massive oil spills or anything. It's still uh, 
pretty dusty on here. Otherwise, that'd be covered in oil if you hadn't put uh, any sort of like an oil pan or in there. But there's not a lot of clearance. So using an old discarded uh, container uh, and just cutting that thin, uh, like I showed you, to slide underneath this front lip. Uh, because you can see the oil filter is angled uh, forward there, sort of angled down. So uh, as you're uh, you know, loosening that oil filter, it's uh, this front edge here where the oil filter meets the filter housing is where it's going to start to leak. So having something that you can fit under there to capture the oil uh, just makes it a super easy and uh, clean uh, way to do it. Last thing I need to do is just to <clears throat> tighten that little fuel clip again that I had uh, loosened to be able to pull the uh, fuel filter out of the way. And uh, that's it. Uh, we're done with the oil change on the uh, Commercial 30. So all in all, pretty straightforward. Uh, no other tools uh, necessary other than a couple pieces of wood and a strap wrench. So uh, that's it for this one, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you think or if this is similar to how you change your oil on your Xmark uh, Commercial 30.